Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's some more funny equipment from the bio lab or medical lab. This one is a heater. I believe it can only do heating, but it's called Techni DR1 Block DB1M. And as far as I can see, there is this dial with three different settings and that is all there is to it really and as far as I can see the three different settings they are pre-programmed somehow so that's the three different temperatures and it says remember to dial back to number two after use thank you and then there is a on off switch on the back so in here just push this so you can open and close it in this uh, hole you can have those two really really big and heavy and solid aluminium blocks so they fit quite good here and then you can take your scientific medical samples and stick in here so uh, you can you can run like 40 tests in parallel I don't know how many hours it's just constant right so let's have a little look here at the back it's just an on off switch like that and it says uh, what 450 watts so that is a lot of heating I was hoping this could be like a Peltier heating cooling kind of thing so I could probably use it for all sorts of cool temperature experiments but let's uh, let's try and see so far I can't turn this so I think I need to open it first or just at least try and power it on and see if it blows up yeah let's let's do that so all we do is power it on and see if there's any current consumption no there's not and then I'll power it on here on the back 200 400 416 watts 1.8 amps so yo 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 this is getting nice and warm so so far so good and no i can't move this one i have no idea what is the idea with these three different things but that one means heating so i bet it is on level three so that means 42 celsius whoops four watts so it's not heating anymore so it's only four watts okay so there's this a uh, this is definitely an on off temperature controller what they called a bang bang in the good old days <laughs> but there could of course be a pid on top of it this so it's just running a pwm that's quite slow because there's a huge mass in here what i can do is take my my ca uh, thermal camera and measure the temperature but that's probably exactly 42 celsius but what bothers me is that i'm not able to change the that one now that was a little bit difficult to figure out so the sides they kind of interlock with this there's an edge that locks with this one and it is of course possible to break and break and then click then they come out but i don't think this is kind of the right way to get in here but i don't i don't see any other way by pure violence so there's a groove in here i don't know if i'm able to get this back that way that i got it disassembled so there's a like a plastic frame that is silicon glue so that's probably for the heater right 
temperature sensor. And uh, okay, some backup sensors. That looks like a thermostat. It's probably a backup thermostat. Really? So this one is cannot be the temperature setting, right? Because we've got three different settings. So how is that possible? So that must be the absolute maximum protection temperature you set up there, right? Because here you got the here you got the the knob, and that one is completely stuck. And that is what I need to figure out. And then there's a PCB with capacitor and some simple stuff, LEDs. It looks like we got a, it looks a little bit like this is a switch. Those three, I haven't yet figured out what they kind of do. Oh! Oh yeah, look at that! We got trimmers! So... Okay! So that will be lids that covers access to some trimmers and they set up the three... define the programming of the three temperatures that is done by trimmers. It is that simple because you can see in here, let's get some light. The three blue potentiometers, that is how that is. <laughs> how simple is that? And all you do with that switch is to change the three different set points. Ha, huh, that is simple as as it can possibly be. And then there's a an extra room in here for isolation. No isolation material or anything, but that's just air. But that's probably good enough because you because you got a 400 watts um, heating element in here so definitely but that is all there is to this uh, electronics maybe I can get in here somehow because I need to access that switch let's have a look is that possible After a little bit of contact cleaning look at that and then I remove the little plastic covers and then you can access the three programming trimmers so that is quite useful and then I was inspecting the board a little bit and this is actually a triac so it's a triac controlled uh, heating element and that is of course why we don't hear any uh, relay going click clack so that will be some capacitors and some stuff that handles um, Yeah, the track and all that kind of stuff. And I don't even see an op amp or anything like that. I just see some transistors here. So probably just some transistors, temperature sensor, and then this uh, backup temperature sensor. That one for safety. And uh, that's all there is to it. And there you have it. Your nice product. All I will have to do now is clean all this up, clean up all this old corrosion. Do I boo? What is that? A dead buck? Ooh, that was disgusting. <laughs> I got a big shock. But all I have to do is clean everything up and make it nice and shiny again. I can probably make this also looks nice and shiny, and then I can perform all sorts of med lab experiments. Haha! Ha. What can we build or grow? I don't know. Maybe tiny little flowers. We'll see what happens. I found the manual and the manual says that of course it works directly from ambient and it can only heat up but the uh, manual says that I can adjust this all the way to 105 and with the 400 watts of heating, it will take 30 minutes to reach uh, 100 Celsius. And that is, of course, only because of those two blocks. 
865 grams of aluminium in each of them right so now you go now you can understand why it will take half an hour with 400 watts to heat them up but that will of course also make it very very nice and stable the temperature because you got this big mass and then it's of course perfectly fine just to click the heater on and off so without this it was super super fast remember when i tested this maybe i'm going to perform a little bit of tests when i'm done assembling i've just been adding contact 61 for lubrication and then i will carefully assemble this unit again but there's really really nothing more to say about the electronics it's really a nice and useful uh unit now it has been running for a little while and i think oh i got light here and i think it's overshooting a little bit because it is not used to um to run without those massive massive materials in here so i put it for program two that should be 37 celsius Look at that. 39, 38 on a piece of paper. And see, the, due to the reflections, I cannot measure the temperature on the aluminum. And that is X, exactly what I <laughs> imagined. And that is why I put this uh, piece of paper. So I think this is quite accurate. What I would try and do is dial it up to level 3 and then it heats up and it's using 402 watts but only for a few seconds it's like see then it turned off it is that fast and then it's probably okay 46 so obviously with this massive heating element it will overshoot a little bit but definitely it is working and it is responding to the to the set points exactly as it should so yeah now it works and i can heat up stuff ha! i am so happy about this so thank you so much for all the cool goodies that i get that's fantastic keep finding cool things and send to me then i can play with stuff and get more stuff and make more cool videos that is absolutely great have a nice day and uh, i hope you liked it see you again soon bye bye